Welcome, everyone, to the From the Shadows podcast. I am your host, Shane Grove, and with me is the super producer, Jason. What's up? Greetings, everyone, and how you doing, Shane? Good. Yeah, you know, I, I I think we've had a couple episodes here where uh, you were not able to be on. It's good to it's good to have that. Should I say sexy voice in my ear? <laughs> now you sounding like somebody else. All right. Oh jeez. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even want to ask. I don't even want to ask. Uh, or is that? Or is that directed to all your fans in Thailand and Japan? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I hear, I hear you're very popular. I just, I don't know. I, I don't fear know that the grounds on. of my answer might incriminate me at further times. So I've received. It's a good thing answer. you know the. It's a, good, it's a good thing you know the judge. It's yes. Uh, well, before we uh, before we get started tonight, I just want to remind everybody that if you. Uh, have an experience that you want to share with uh, me and Jason and, you know, the judge, if we can drag him onto the air, uh, you can find us on Facebook at from the shadows, uh, the, from the shadows podcast page. Uh, you can find us on our forum page at after the shadows. You can find me at Shane Grove, uh, author on Instagram or from the shadows podcast, uh, Instagram page. Just go to our website from the shadows podcast.com, hit the contact button, send me an email. Um, it comes directly to me. I will, I promise I'll read it uh, and get back to you unless it's just something crazy. No, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't. I don't even know what the bar for crazy would be um, to be honest with you. But uh, uh, yeah, we love hearing from, uh, from our listeners and from people who have a story to share. And, uh, well, oh, Jason, we do want to remind everybody, if you, if you do want some extra content, content, we, we've been really, um, adding some cool content to our uh, Patreon page. And this if is just the go, beginning. Just yeah, the beginning. Yeah. We, well, don't make promises. I can't keep, come on. You can't um, keep them, but I can't. Uh, Oh jeez, <laughs> but yeah, we've uh, we've got some pretty good uh, we've got some pretty good shows we got up there the last couple months on Patreon. So if you want to go check them out, just uh, look up at from from the Shadows podcast on Patreon, and um, you can pick a pick a uh, level that suits you and uh, check out extra shows, commercial free shows. I put the shows up early. Um, when I can, when I can get them up, I, I put them up early. So, uh, but yeah, it's kind of a cool area. Check it out. Um, and we hope to keep growing that. So, but, uh, so, so speaking of that, what I just encouraged everybody to do to reach out to me, that's how we got today's guest. So we're going to bring on, uh, Hayden from Mississippi. Hayden, welcome to the, from the shadows podcast. Welcome, What's up, Aiden. guy? What's up? All right. Hey, hey, we're we're glad we're glad you uh, you could join us. Um, you know, I, I I loved being contacted by you because when I started reading, uh, you know, just some of the stuff that you you had to talk about, I'm like, oh man, this ought to be good. And then, yeah. uh, and then when we did get to talk, I my suspicions were confirmed. So. <laughs> So, oh, so I will, so Hayden, let's, let's just let you take it away and kind of All give right. a little background of, uh, sure. of your life and, uh, just get into, get into what's been happening to you. Yeah, man. Well, I'll start with this, you know, I set the setting, I'm walking around outside in my yard, no shoes on, you know, in the middle of the woods, trying to stay grounded while I talk to, uh, two internet celebrities, Oh, <laughs> well, I appreciate I appreciate that. Just uh, watch where you're stepping, then, if you're. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, it's funny because the neighbors have uh, a couple dozen chickens, and every once in a while, you know, you'll step in something wet. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know how it is on the farm. Yeah, lots of people, you know, want to talk about the the joys of homesteading, but nobody wants to talk about that. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So um, I guess I'll just start, you know, from the beginning. Um, so I was born in in '94 in Grenada, Mississippi. 
um, during the ice storm of 94. I don't know if any of y'all are old enough to remember that, but lots, uh, lots of parts of the country were, you know, without power. For actually, years. actually, Jason and I are so old that we don't remember it because <laughs> <laughs> we're old that we don't, that we've, but I see, I do vaguely remember that. I, I, I know it had to be linked to what happened up here in Ohio because we had a terrible cold. Um, in are you talking like was it January, February, February? Yeah. Okay. I I do remember it being extremely cold here in Ohio for a stretch. So I I wonder if that's tied to the same. Yeah. Um, I think wow, it was the okay. same storm front. Yeah, we had ice. Uh, the ice got so thick on a lot of the power lines, it was down, putting the power yeah. out all there, over there the place. There was no yeah. power uh, for the first couple of weeks I was here. Um, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, but my grandfather being a mechanic, you know, he he rigged something up, and we were the only one in town with power. So I guess it was meant to be, you know. I made it through the <laughs> storm. Um, but um i'll try to go in chronological order with these stories some of it's going to get muddled up but i'll try to start and you know keep in mind the first stories are going to be more anecdotal they're not so much my story so i can't you know i can't say that they're fact and also for any any um any people we refer to as they all of these stories they happen in minecraft all this stuff happened and uh <laughs> i don't know how to say it um uh geez that got that got weird but um like it had you know <sighs> god damn it somebody save me <laughs> <laughs> so, so 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 what do you so what do you try to say when you say they you're t- are you talking about yeah like any you know anybody that would want to look in deeper to any of these things um I don't oh, okay gotcha they're, they're gotcha. all real they're all real stories um oh okay i get yeah i get but uh mm. yeah it's it's a joke that's kind of a meme if, if it happened in minecraft you know mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay i'm sorry about that <laughs> <Derailed it. laughs> that's okay so, that's okay. okay so the first story um that happened when I was a baby. Um, my my mimi operated this general store in the Delta uh, Mills General Store. And to set to set the setting, um, I'm about an hour south of Memphis. Okay, so about an hour, hour and a half south of Memphis. To you know, relate it geographically. Um, but my mimi had this general store, you know, they sold sandwiches and like ice cream and cigars and different things like that. Just like, you know, a small town general store you'd see in the middle of nowhere. And, um, I was with my Nana and she said this lady showed up to the store that she had never seen before. Um, like this real, like witchy looking lady, kind of like, a. I don't know, like a drifter, like a gypsy thing. And she said that she was totally fixated on me. Um, and she came up and she's like, you know, this kid, he's, he's got the spirits with him. And that's like all she said to, to my Nana. And that's all it was. And, you know, she never saw the lady again or anything like that. And that's just kind of how it was. Um, but that's, that kind of kicks it off. With the paranormal, it's pretty, you know, that kind of ushered in the whole thing. Um, well, let so, me let me let me ask you. So, at what point were you told that story? Um, probably, you know, like you can't, you know, you can't say for sure, but um, probably around ten or so. I would think. I was gonna say because, listen, if. <laughs> You can, you can't, can't tell me that you would tell a kid that just to yank their chain. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what leads me to think that okay, yeah, that actually happened. The lady came up and saw something, and um, 
and really believed that you had something special. You know what I'm saying? Like, like why else would you tell your, your grand, grandson that, you know, that would be kind of yeah, creepy. I mean, yeah, it is. And, um, I'll get back to what I told you, you know, earlier, um, further than that, um, the house that my Mimi lived in, um, it was an old farmhouse, um, in Crowder, Mississippi. Um, and which is pretty close to like the whole, um, crossroads thing where that, I can't remember his name. The Robert Johnson. Yeah. Robert Johnson. He sold his soul or whatever. That's, that's in like this kind of area. If y'all have done any research on that, or there's a lot of creepy stories, you know, from here, um, the, the stories of the the big the big cats you know the panthers that uh that roam the night and all that but there's lots of stories like that um so my mommy lived in this old farmhouse and it um they got the land cheap the farmhouse that was there before supposedly burned down and like some of the family was in it and you know, they ended up rebuilding the house. Um, and some of the sections of the house supposedly were on, you know, on top of pieces that burned down, but they would always see things. And my great grandmother, my Mimi, she would always, um, she knew like the gender, sorry for all of you non, you know, non-conforming, but she would always know the gender before the baby was born. Um, the doctors even told my parents that I was going to be a girl for the longest time. And my mommy's like, no, no, he's a boy, you know, that kind of thing. And she swore up and down that I was, but, um, she would see things like that. And, you know, she would see family members and things like that in her dreams before she died. And she saw ghosts and apparitions and, you know, she's got her own stories too. Um, she had lots of stories actually. But um, we were at her house when I was a little bit older. Um, I was probably three or four, you know, old enough to walk. But um, I was there with my parents, and we were staying the night there. And um, they had put me down to bed in the next room. And they were, my parents, were in the same bedroom as my mimi. There was two beds in the room. And, um, you know, it, this house had this reputation for being creepy. And uh, they were laying down, and, you know, they heard the the front door by the hallway, it opened, and they heard the, like, pitter-patter of feet, like, running up and down the hallway. And my mom's, like, you know, nudging my dad, like, hey, Hayden, Hayden's up. He's not in bed like he's supposed to be. And <laughs> I guess my dad just kind of, like, went back under the covers. <laughs> and uh <laughs> you know this happened the, the the feet kept running up and down the hallway and nobody nobody wanted to get up and check well you know eventually my mom gets up and she goes in the hallway there's no one there and she goes to the room where i was sleeping and sure enough i'm laying down in bed sound asleep um so <sighs> Uh, you know, every day, so that's the second time I've heard that. And I just keep thinking, I'm just picturing your parents laying there, but are you going to go check on him? I'm not going to go check on him. Are you, gonna go check? are you sure? That doesn't sound like him. Well, that's even more reason to get up and check. You know, I can just, like, what's the rationale that Dude, I do not kids blame running him. up and down the hallway this or place. something else? Is. <laughs> Dude, this place is creepy. I'm telling you. I do not blame them for <laughs> for not getting up. I know, but imagine that inner turmoil of, yeah, yeah, that's my kid. And if it's not my kid, you know, and my kid should be in bed. <laughs> or if it's not my kid, it's something else. And my kid could be in danger. Like, I just, oh, boy. That would. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you were safe. And <laughs> Totally, man. <laughs> totally. And, you know, I had, you know, as a, as a kid, I had nights at that house where I couldn't fall asleep and I would just be kind of like paralyzed by fear. 
uh, more or less, like just knowing that something's there and not like not knowing what it is, but you can feel, you can feel a presence. And there was something about that house that, you know, goes creepy to say the least. Um, well, I, I wonder, did you, so do you, I don't remember if you ever said, but the fire that took place there, did anybody die in that fire? Supposedly, yes. So, were, I want, so I wonder if those were the spirits that this lady saw around you, like maybe that the spirits of whatever were in that house before yeah. it got she, rebuilt, you know, rebuilt. Yeah. And she has stories about seeing um, a farm boy there with like a kind of like overalls and straw hat. And he always had a dog with him. And she would, whenever she saw these things and she would know if they were good or bad, but you know, supposedly they would have a light around them or they would be like really dark. Ooh, um, okay. Classic story of, you know, the light and the dark, but anytime she would invoke Jesus and start praying, they would apparate and they would be gone. Um, wow. Okay. That's kind of, yeah. Um, so let's see. I'm trying to think. All right. So I'll keep going. Um, the next one, um, this was probably, I was probably in ninth or 10th grade. So this is like 2009 or so. Um, I was chilling on the couch at my mom's house with my buddy. And we were like hanging on the, out on the couch for like, I think Red Dead Redemption for Xbox 360 had just come out. So we were playing that and we were just hanging out and... <laughs> It was it was like an open style house, um, you know. The living room, the dining room, and the kitchen are just more or less connected, and you can just walk all the way through the house. Well, um, we were sitting there on the couch, and the front door opens and closes, <laughs> and you know we hear footsteps. It was that vinyl, like fake fake wood flooring and we heard you know we heard somebody walk through the house and all the way through the house the back door opens and slams and we're you know we're both just sitting there like like i know you saw that too kind of thing and <laughs> you know he uh he did the whole you know it's, it's getting late it's, uh, <laughs> I got to go. I got homework to do. He did that kind of thing. So he left me alone. And uh, later that night, I was, you know, doing the same thing. I probably just kept playing Red Dead. And I was just sitting on the couch and I hear uh, like, like a knocking noise from the kitchen. And it was like in the cabinet above the refrigerator. And I get up and go in there to check and of course you know nothing in the cabinet well so <laughs> i've got to ask like because i've never you know i've seen some stuff but never to to that magnitude where something physical is happening where right. you know a door so you can see i mean you obviously the way the house is laid out that you've described you can see everywhere this sound is supposed to be coming from yeah right? i mean you can see and you can see there's nothing there so what what exactly is going through your mind and and then when you get up to like to go open the cupboard door like what do you think you're gonna what do what are you what are you thinking you're gonna find or what are you hoping Dude, you're gonna find? no lie i could only think about like the friday the Friday movie when he's like going and opening the cupboard, cupboard, and fucking big worms heads right there yelling. Oh, at him. <laughs> <laughs> where my money's my yeah, where my money? Like that. Yeah. Like, thought that's what was gonna happen, and there's nothing there, you know. To my, well, you know. 
Well, well, I mean, even it's just like that. You'd almost want to see Big Worm's head. Because <laughs> yeah. what else? What, what else would you like? Yeah. Either it's a big rat going, dude, let me <laughs> out of the house. Yeah, it, it could have been. You know, it could have oh been. That'd what be was that? Rat. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Well, was that house? Too. <laughs> so, well, was that was that house uh, an old house too? Like no, I mean, not at a... all. This was like this was like newer construction. Really? Uh, yeah, and you know, she moved around a lot, so it was always townhouses and things like that. It was never like older stuff. Um, so it wasn't that. And from my understanding, you know, there there are. I mean, I'm sure you all know about ley lines and all the that stuff. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, it's very interesting stuff. Um, you know, more, places are more haunted than others, but I think at the same time, too, people are haunted. And fu- stuff just follows them around and fucks with them, more or less. I think that's what, what happens. Now, so, do you, so do you feel like this was – anything that was happening was because – of you being there. Yes. Yes. Okay. And it's, it, it ties into that. Like I've always like kind of seen weird things and weird things happen when people hang around me. And it's, it's just one of those things. Um, <laughs> um, so I'll try to keep this going. Um, I'm, I, I made a list so I wouldn't like forget anything to bring up. Okay, so I'll uh, I'll move on to the next one. All right. Let's see. Um, okay, so I'll set the setting for this one. Um, I'm a little bit older, uh, probably 11th grade in high school. Um, so this is around 2010, 2011. Um, me and my buddy were chilling in this pool house and, you know, being young kids, we were, you know, smoking and drinking and doing that type of carrying on. But we, um, you know, it got late. It was probably midnight, one o'clock or so. And it was like early fall. So it was like just getting cold and it was raining. So we decided to go to the gas station for cigarettes or whatever. And his house was about a hundred yards away from Roanoke, which is William Far- William Faulkner's house. Um, and these roads were paved, obviously, but they're more or less like wagon roads or horse roads. Like they're very skinny, like back roads, like right off of a town square. Um, so, you know, we're like I say, we're right next to Roanoke, but we go up to the Chevron, get some cigarettes, and we're coming back, and we're almost back to his house, and we're about to round the corner and turn at the stop sign. When we stop at the stop sign, we look down the hill, and in the middle of the road, there's a little girl standing there, and... The, the rain is just kind of passing through her. So, you know, we, we like look at each other and I'm like, dude, just, just go back to the house. Let's just go, please. So we take a right and we go back to the house and we're like, when, when this stuff happens, we... I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like you don't want to acknowledge it or like talk about it. Cause it's almost like inviting it in. I would say for more experiences. Yeah. That's uh that's an old way of thinking about things. Yep. That's true. So, yeah. And that's, that's kind of always the way I've experienced them is like it, it happened, but just leave, you know, leave it there and don't, don't like make a fuss of it, you know? Right. So we get back to his pool house and, you know, we're, we're hanging out, like watching a movie 
and the door on this pool house is like an old style door and half of it's glass like pane glass and half of it's wood well there's all this condensation and stuff from the rain and the panes and we look over and there's like there's a small handprint in the window of this door <laughs> oh god uh. And then you were voted worst friend ever in the senior <laughs> class. <laughs> I mean, oh my god! Um, I mean, dude, that's like horror movie stuff. Like, you see the girl who needs help on the street, but you guys don't help her, and then she follows you home and like, please help me, and her yeah. hands on the window. Oh, I. So what are your no what do your friends say? Like, cause is this the same? Are you hanging out with the same dudes or? Just... Yeah, I mean, they can, they can all like corroborate these stories. But, I mean, I have a but I mean, are they like, like the weird guy? You know, like something but, weird might happen. I, that's what I'm saying. So they're so I mean, they got to be freaked out. Yeah, but I mean, I can't be blamed for that. Surely, you know. Oh, I'm blaming I, you for that. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, come on. That, that is, that's 100%. <laughs> like, yeah. that girl, I mean, I, what's impressive to me is is that you are you have friends with you experiencing this stuff. Totally. And that they still want to be your friend. And, uh, <laughs> but I mean, uh, like, and I think I, and I ask you, and I, you know, so we'll let the audience know, you guys were 100% sure that was not a real girl standing in the street and you just didn't leave a poor helpless no, girl in the rain. You yeah. know, she wasn't wearing any kind of like jacket or protection or anything. She was wearing like a dress or something like that, but she wasn't like mm, human colored. She was like a grayish color. And like I said, stuff was moving through her. She wasn't, um, she wasn't there, so to speak. Wow. And, and like, what made you guys look at the door? Did you guys hear a sound or anything? Or it was just something like you just like, have no, to look up? not that time. Like, I, I mean, I think I saw it, you know, and brought it up. Like, look, look, <laughs> like, look what's going on. This thing followed us back to the house. And, you know, after we saw that, it kind of, it became more real, I guess, you know, like, okay, we did see what we see. And then, you know, it showed itself again. Um, and that, that was pretty freaky. I, yeah. I mean, it's almost like, it's almost like the, that the entity or whatever wanted to make contact with you. Like yeah. it was trying to get your attention, like for some reason now, now, and I don't, no, you know, I don't know anything else, but have, do you ever feel that way that they're trying, something's trying to get your attention or is it just the stuff happens around you and, and it is what it is? Yeah. It makes you wonder, um, what's out there. Um, I think but so. I, I mean, but I mean, you don't, have you ever got a feeling though, the, that, like, yeah. Like, like what if it's, you know, what if it's me from a different timeline or from the future or oh, from wow. a life or something crazy like that or you know you never know that's it's a whole nother perspective right there i was gonna know? say that's taking it to a level i wasn't even expecting like you're coming back trying to um but you know wow. what we yeah. can't rule it out though we really can't and i just think about the like interstellar when he's like beating on the the bookshelf trying to talk to talk to his daughter but from yes the, yep i remember that scene yeah the tesseract yep crazy ass scene but that's how i think about it when weird shit happens i'm like what if what if like I'm, it's me trying to throw myself off of some sort of path i'm on or you know even somebody watching over um one of your guides maybe but these yeah. these experiences seem to be more of a trickster vibe and not so much mm -hmm. uh, okay. protector vibe, I guess you could say. Something's okay. definitely 
fucking with me. <laughs> I would say that. Oh, so oh yeah, the bad word. Well, that's okay. Oh, We're not worried about that. Um, but you're uh, you are a very intuitive individual, and sometime there's been a debate whether um, spirits or things like that can they notice certain people like their vibrations are a little off or a little closer to the vibrations of the entities. And so they can sense that. And so they actually right. seek out, uh, people and you perceive it on your end as a recipient, like, Oh man, I can see this stuff or I'm having all these interactions where people around you may not be. Uh, what do you think about that theory? Yeah. I mean, that's totally right. I would say that, um, there's like, you know, we have a veil and from time to time, time to time, the veil gets lifted and things bleed in and show themselves. And if you're aligned with something higher or lower, mm -hmm. those things would be attracted to you. It makes perfect sense. And yeah. I've given you know, a lot of thought, honestly. Yeah, we, we've also heard, I think it was Sonia, the psychic medium, who said uh, a lot of times these spirits and stuff are totally surprised, too, when they, somebody can see them and they try to, and they're like, whoa, wait a second. I got to get out of here. I got to hide. You know, like they, they yeah. saw me, Leo, and uh, <laughs> which is also interesting. Like they don't, you know, you think if you were hanging out on a different plane, you might, you might be a little more hip, you know, <laughs> understand <laughs> and not be taken by surprise by something. But, uh, well, smoke. if you think about it, I like to refer to that as the old Beetlejuice adage. You remember when the girl was, went into the house, she could see the ghost and they, and other people, that were in the house, like the people to sell it. Well, they, they couldn't. No, wait it. a second. Don't, no, wait a second. Did you, did you just make something up? The, the old beetle juice? Yes, added? I called it. That, <laughs> it's because the way I thought about it through a lot of research that we've had and different guests that have come on, they've described this basic concept, which we're discussing right now. And I, it made me know, think about think, it in the beetle juice movie. So I referred to it in my head as the beetle juice adage. <laughs> I think that's kind of reach. I don't think people are like sitting around going, yeah, you know the old, you know, <laughs> Beetlejuice. Yeah, That's old... original right there. I know. <laughs> Genius. Oh, God. Wow. Hey, we mark that down. That might have to go on a T-shirt. You know, the old Beetlejuice hat. <laughs> like, what the? Oh, my God. Okay. I'm sorry, Hayden. We were, we're going to get you off way off track here. So That's all good, man. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so you got little girls following you home okay um, yeah boy that sounds terrible doesn't it but you got uh little girl entities following you home leaving handprints then then what's the next adventure that you drag your poor innocent friends into, <laughs> drag okay. them into. so this one i more or less got dragged into okay. i will say okay uh, and this is my first experience with and this is where i get discredited too i'm probably called a schizo but this is my first like foray into psychedelics okay um i don't like i i don't know like how to like what's on on the table or off for this podcast but um i'll say this so I was living in, in South Haven at the time, which is at the very basic top of Mississippi. It's um, right next to Memphis. And my two buddies came up, one of them from the story I told earlier about the thing walking through the house. He comes up with my other buddy. And the other buddy is very experienced with these things. But me personally, I had never done anything besides alcohol and you know the ganj so we uh we we drive up to memphis i knew where to get these substances and we went up there and you know we get the said um we'll call it the we'll call it the god particle we we get some of those and the guy comes back with it and he's like, 
all right, the guy said two things about this particular thing. He said, don't, don't take more than one. And if you have work the next day, don't go. And at the time I was living and working in the same apartment complex. I was a groundskeeper. And, um, so my buddy, call him Sharp, my buddy Sharp, he's like, this, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's, he's like, I've done this a bunch of times already. He's like, let's just take two and it'll be, it'll be cool. It's, it'll be fun. You know, this is your first time. I want you to, you know, I want you to feel it. So we, we take, we take two of these, um, to these God particles and we drive back to South Haven and this stuff usually takes 45 minutes, an hour to kick in. And, um, yeah, when, when it did, it was, it was pretty magical. Um, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners have had this experience. Um, but, um, it was known as a breakthrough experience, which doesn't normally happen without uh, DMT. Come to find out, the the thing that we took was synthetic mescaline, which is like um, it's like a research chemical. But from what I understand, it's like it's kind of like peyote. I guess would be the the closest thing to it. All right. Yeah. But what I ended up seeing that night was um, close to what, how the ancient civilizations depict the globe model. Like, there was this huge dome structure over, over us. Like, if you looked into the sky, it was just a huge, like, purple grid. It almost looked like, uh, like lightning bolts, but it was this huge grid, and that night, my friend saw this too. He saw the grid too. But we ended up seeing seeing the wind, which is pretty pretty amazing. I don't know if you've ever seen the wind, but it's it's exactly how you would think it looks. Oh, it's like so when you say s- wispy, uh, <laughs> so it's like you could like conceptualize what air moving around looked like. Yes, but you could also see it. Wow. And okay. so, what, so what blows me away about this is, is that you're experiencing the same thing with somebody else. Yes. We, we, we both bo- broke through. And every time we talk about this experience, you know, he's like, man, I wish I could get some of that shit again. Because I've done, um, I've done acid a bunch of times. And I don't do it anymore, of course. This was all in my youth. But never have I ever had an experience like this one. Um, ever. I mean, this was, this was different. I, uh, most trips are about eight hours long. And I ended up tripping for a couple of days, man, like hard. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was a... I guess akin to like a sweat lodge experience from, from the native Americans. I mean, that's the closest I can think of what it would be like, but just like if, if we talked about the veil earlier, you just, if you took the veil and just ripped it away and all these things poured in, um, we had some weird experiences that night too, talking about it. There was more of the kind of like the trickster thing, like turning on and off the lights while we were foolishly, I, w- I, I thought I had it figured out. You know, I was going to go to sleep and go to work the next day. And I never fell asleep. And <laughs> my other friend that was doing it, he didn't fall asleep for a couple of days either. But while we were trying, you know, something was like flicking on and off the lights um, and that kind of thing. And the third friend, he was sober. He didn't take anything and he would he would never take these kind of psychedelics and he's freaking out because the lights are flickering 
in the house. Like the bathroom, middle bathroom light keeps going on and off. So he doesn't sleep either. None of us sleep, but we're all just like quietly just in our own space kind of thing. So, so he's so he's not like experiencing some of the the purple grid and stuff. No, not but he's at all. all. But he's experiencing the physical stuff that you guys yeah. are. And if okay. if anybody if anybody's wondering what I'm talking about, just Google. And this it might be scrubbed now. I have no idea. Just look at the different ancient depictions of of the globe and like the Navajo and the Hebrew. And the Aztec and all those things have like the same kind of model. And it's pretty similar to what I saw. And I know that other people have seen it, but it's, it's pretty rare. But like I said, um, these were, it was a pretty powerful substance, whatever it was. Um, and that kind of took me down the path of um, spirituality, maybe. That opened my eyes to a lot of things. Um, since then, I've I feel like I feel like those type of substances kind of show you God a lot more. I just remember feeling more like um, one with everything. I would say, as cheesy as that sounds, it's true that stuff will bring you closer to it. Um, well, I well I wonder. Okay, so I wonder if. Um, cause I mean, I've heard a lot about, um, oh, what are they talking about? Like the mushroom stuff, you know, and like doing that, like kind of, it kind of opens up your, your mind and you wonder what, if it's like opening your third eye sort of. Oh speak, yeah, for sure. To where, I mean, in, you know, we go through our lives right now and you kind of just are like looking at your phone, narrow minded on. You know, I got to get this job done. I got to go pick up grocery. You know, you know what I'm saying? You're not like in tune with what's going on in the world. You're busy, hyper-focused on some menial day-to-day tasks that unfortunately we all got to do to, you know, get by. And it's almost like you had an experience through that psychedelic um, that you took to that kind of like relaxed, you know, <laughs> the tension away from your day-to-day life and kind of opened up that eye that can see that they, you know, all the ancient religions and and stuff kind of say, we all have that ability um, to see things that physically aren't there, you know, but it's, you know, called opening your third eye, you know? So, yeah. um, Yeah. I just want, you know, you just wonder if that's what that, was like well i i feel like to a certain extent um it had already like started opening and that kind of like led down this road you know when things like that happen and your perspectives altered in such a way it's it's a lot and that experience definitely changed me um i became a little bit reclusive i would say after that um not for good obviously just for a period of time you know like kind of like self-reflection i feel like a lot of men do that in their early 20s they kind of like go off and do their own thing and that's when that kind of starts but yeah that kind of brought me down the path of like i was saying spirituality um which doesn't really mean much but I will say this, um, you know, as a, as a teenager and as a kid, I didn't really believe in a God. Um, and also in my angsty, you know, like preteen, like teenage years, I, I kind of did like the, the, the Reddit atheist thing. I'm like, you know, God's not real. If you're, you believe in him, you know, you're, you're an idiot, like that type of thing. Um, so I was like, I was about a blasphemer for sure. Um, and it's pretty funny. Um, my name, my first name's Timothy. Um, and my middle name's Hayden. So I think the book of Timothy is about blaspheming and then Hayden, I mean, Hayden means heathen in old English, which, you know, means godless. So my parents kind of stuck me with that. Holy, holy moly. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Right. right. 
So it was kind of like a self-fulfilling prof- prophecy, but this, this opened me up to, to something else. I mean, like I said, I feel like it kind of pulled some walls down and let some light in, so to speak. And ever since then, I've just gotten closer and closer to, you know, some people call it source. Some people call it God, but that's God. Well, yeah. I mean, certainly uh, it probably did make you like want to know, okay, what else is ha- you know, What else is here that I'm not, yeah, experience or seeing on a totally uh, man. And so, uh, go ahead. I, I'm just so uh, maybe you were going to answer, but so like, is this something like? Are you do you still experience some of this stuff with or without that? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I've had like I said, I've had psychedelic experience since then, and none of them have come close. Besides. Um, the spirit molecule, if y'all all know what that is, the the chemical that's that's released when you're uh, you're dreaming. I don't want to say it, but that came. That was a lot, but it didn't even it didn't come close to this experience. But um, yeah, I mean, I've always kind of been more conspiratorial minded, but this kind of led me to start digging like harder. You know what's what's really out there. I feel like that's what kind of everybody wants to know, you know, what's the, what's the truth. Mm -hmm. Um, And that led me to some discoveries and still learning about how things work or, you know, every day. Um, So I'll keep them going. I mean, around the same time, I'm talking about being kind of off to myself. So, the same apartment that I'm, I had this experience and I'm living and I'm working and I'm going back and forth between South Haven and Oxford on the weekends in this time period. Um, and, you know, I would just hang out with, hang out with some buds on the weekend and then drive back for work. Well, this one night I was driving back from Oxford and I'm on 55 and I'm like almost to Hernando. And I'm watching the the trees kind of pull back and I'm watching, the, I'm looking at the skyline and I see these lights and they're, they're bigger than airplanes like you can see in the sky, but they're in clusters of three on the horizon. I can see them. I'm driving in my little 89 Ranger, like down the highway, like looking on the right side of the highway and I can see these things and you know like what what are these you know what are these what are these things moving in clusters together across the sky and they they start getting closer right and there's probably five clusters of three I would say between 15 and 20 of these things. And they start getting closer, right? And it feels like one of the clusters of three breaks off. And before I know it, one of these things is like on top of me and beside like On top of me and beside me, like not directly over me, but like enough to where I can see the fucking size of this thing. And this thing was no shit, like the size of a fucking city. This thing was a huge grayish black colored triangle with this um, purple purple reddish color like a ball of energy in the middle of it and i could i could not like all the shit i've seen at this point i could not believe what the fuck i was seeing like 
this dude, the size of this thing, I was in awe of it. I was like, this thing is about to suck me up and I'm never going to be seen again. And I called one of my buddies and I'm like, dude, you are not going to believe this shit. I'm driving back up to South Haven and there's this huge fucking shit thing and it's keeping pace with me and like flying beside me. And I was like freaking out. And that other experience I just talked about had not happened <clears throat> that far before. I mean, it almost felt like um, like a like a psychosis or something. I mean, I'm not trying to discredit myself, but I was freaking the fuck out. But I called my buddy, who I had the other two experiences with. I'm like, hey, man. <laughs> there's this fucking shit, man, and it's flying right next to me. I don't know what it wants. I don't know if it's going to take me, but I'm telling you about it now. And eventually, you know, it keeps up with me for a while, and it was like, I don't want to sound vain, but it was like interested in me. It flew beside me, and it flew above me for a period of time down the highway. By the time I got to my exit, it was gone. And... If you do a little research, you can look these these aircraft up. It's a TR-3B. Um, you want to look that up and see what that looks like. Um, that's kind of what I saw. And that's like, I guess, experimental government aircraft, which that's a whole nother bag of bag of worms, because what is that? What is that really, you know? What kind of so? So you, so you're not saying you thought this was a UFO. You this, you thought this was an actual. At the time, I did. I mean, I didn't know what that was. I thought it was a UFO. I was like, you know, what the fuck is this thing? And I did some research. Um, not, not, not right after that, because what are you going to look up big, big triangle in the sky? You know, you're not going to find yeah. much. But in my research, a couple years later, you know. I saw that and I was like, wow, that's, that's what I saw, you know, and I put two and two together, but it's, it's, um, it's a TR three B and it's supposedly experimental government aircraft. Yeah. They currently, they got it nicknamed as the black manta ray. Dude, that thing, that thing was huge and it was, it was scary, man. It was it like the force coming off of that thing. You could, it was palpable. You could feel it, man. And like I said, I didn't know. I didn't know what it wanted, but it, it felt the need to to fly right there. And I saw them, you know, I watched the horizon for the rest of the night. And they kind of did that thing all night. They were just kind of like flying around the general area. And you could see them in the distance. <laughs> Here is the... Here is here is what it, one of the descriptions. It doesn't exist officially. It usually hi, uses highly pressured mercury accelerated by nuclear energy to produce a plasma that creates a field of anti gravity around the ship. Oh my! I mean, that's some UFOs. I mean, that's what, exactly that's what UFO technology there. And it, that's I mean. Yeah. Supposedly, that's what the ball in the middle of the triangle is. That's like plasma, and that's supposed to be "quote unquote" anti gravity. Um, and dude, this thing was fast. Like, if it wanted to go, if it wanted to move without you seeing it, it would be gone. Like that type of fast. It didn't do that. Like, it just it it did what it did, you know. And then when it was time to go, it kind of like listed off. And it was gone, but it was big and it was fast. I'll say that. Wow. Yeah, all these all these things are saying it's thought to be the first um, first thing built was reverse engineering from an alien spacecraft. Right. Yeah. Now, of course, that's you know merely speculation, but these you know sometimes some of these uh, places that are printing this stuff have a lot more information than the general public do. But, right, absolutely. <laughs> or so the, the government's willing to share um, that. Wow. So, I mean, so once you came to grips with, like, 
you, you just wonder, like, was that a some kind of maneuver that they were practicing to see how they could, or maybe to see how you would react, or you know, you wonder how if they're just messing with people, yeah, to see what the reaction will will be. To our people in the I audience that's going to be listening to this, look this up, people. This is a TR three B aircraft. Put it right in the Google search engine and see what we're talking about here. Yes, and then expect it to be following you down your one lane road on your way home one night. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> because now, it was it wasn't that. It was it was a two it was a four lane highway, you know, two lanes on one side, then the median in the middle, and then two ways on the other. I mean right. other people I mean, I don't know for sure, but I feel like other people saw it too. Um, unless there's, you know, it's experiment. Like it could have some cloaking device and only I could see it. I have no idea what the, what the hell they've got going on, but it's really fun. But I can see where initially you're, you're like, Oh my gosh, I had a, I had a break breakthrough break breakthrough. And now, um, you know, now, now they know that I know something. <laughs> That's what it felt like, man. I was yeah. Like, Shit. I like, yeah, okay. I'm on the radar now because they know my conscience is open, and my, <laughs> and it, I, and I've seen things, and they're, they're going to keep tabs on me, sort of deal. You know, here's something you might want to consider too: is this thing moves so fast that in order to be able to control it, it might actually work off of brain waves, like yeah, you think telep- to move it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, like, dude, you could feel like you could feel the energy coming off of this thing, um, and it was it was very intimidating. And I, like I said, I felt the need to call my friend and be like, "Hey, I'm I'm in this place right now. If if you don't like, if I disappear, some crazy shit. This is kind of what happened. And I thought I thought that was about to happen." Did you did you think about like trying to take a picture or video? I mean, I don't know what what time you know when this was. And I did, and all you could really see, you know, was the glow of that that little ball. Wow. Uh, okay. It just looked like a light, basically. It, it would have been a picture of like a red light in the middle of the sky. But... Which, which, and I'm just going to use this as an example. You know, like. Um, so we were just out west in, in Utah on a little vacation, and you know we're trying to take pictures of the landscape and just how like awe inspiring it is and how big it is. It never comes out the way you experience it. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, and yeah. I think people, people, a lot of people discredit people for not getting a better picture, not getting a better video. Um, but if you're trying to capture something in quickly, in real time, you know, and get, before it gets away or it's fleeting, I, you're just—I don't think you're going to get it if you're not expecting it, you know. Yeah. And um, and and, and that was proof positive. Like we're, we're trying to capture like the, uh, you know, just how big some of these mountains and and how yeah, you, know, you just could not, you could not capture. Uh, the reality of what you were seeing and it it's kind of it's kind of weird you know because with the technology we have even with our phones you think you'd be able to put yourself right there you know even looking back in a picture or video and you just it's not the way it goes yeah not necessarily (laughs) no okay so so you almost got abducted by a uh spaceship slash experimental um yeah, uh, government. Oh, wow, the Galactic Federation. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there is um, and that's like I always think like, well, like what's on this thing? You know, is it is it fucking CIA? Is it like a mix of like CIA and like reptilians or something crazy? Or is it something you know just like like he was talking about just like thought forms? Maybe you, it makes you wonder. Yeah, don't ask questions we really don't want to know. It's a, well, I want to know. I mean, I, think, <laughs> I just do. I think, I think um, wow. Yeah, I just, I, 
there's just so much stuff going on that, it, that it, it's uh, definitely something to think about Hayden that's for sure yeah oh yeah oh yeah so that's um have y'all ever had any like UFO type experiences no I have not, not but I, I love not to hear really. about them and I, I stayed out in Nevada for a number of years too and um I was not fortunate enough to experience anything myself, but I talked to about five or six people that have that. Uh, and one gentleman in particular took me right out to the spot where he had his encounter, but I've haven't been fortunate enough to have one myself. You keep saying I haven't been fortunate enough. And I just really, man, come on. <laughs> you know how you have some people that are social justice warriors. Well, I'm our answer justice warrior. Oh, I'll get out there. I'm going. I'm going to find Bigfoot. I'm going to. I'm going to get answers and deliver them to our loyal audience here at the From the Shadows podcast. Oh gosh! Okay. You think you want to see one until you do, man? <laughs> and then I'd be scared we, shitless, right? <laughs> yeah, we keep trying to tell him that. Keep trying to tell him that he's a. Well, let's go. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. No, I and 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 just like Jason, I mean, I haven't had uh, any experience with the UFO. I and I, but I've talked to some some people, especially off the air. That um, I mean, they they have some real questions about, um, and not just seeing stuff like it, physical interactions with yeah, right. With um, and I don't so. To be clear, I don't really, and this might upset some of your viewers, but I don't necessarily believe in aliens. Um, um, I think that those are all creatures from other dimensions, so to speak. I don't think that there's necessarily other worlds out there. Um, I used to be like pretty into aliens, but now I've come... After, you know, the experiences I was talking about, it opened up a lot of things. Um, it seems more like those are like entities within this realm that can kind of shift in and out of different dimensions. And, you know, it also could be this is a, a theory out there in the industry that people think that it could be us in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. Totally. totally. Yep the big heads and the big eyes and the small bodies and all that. It makes sense. Yep. You know, if that's us from the future, I mean, I might be considered kind of a good looking dude. <laughs> like, hey, I mean, if I could, if I could time travel to the future, I might, I mean, come on, maybe I might be, you have, you'd have your pick. <laughs> I, <laughs> my pick of, uh, big headed, big eyed, <laughs> big headed, oh. big eyed women. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have my pick of those now. I mean, come on, let's be serious. Uh, uh, oh, man. So, That's funny. so, <laughs> but it's the truth. Anyway, so as the, so, so as you continue your journey, then, so what, um, you know, what are some of the other things that have, that have, that have happened? Okay. Um, this was around the same time. I don't know if it was before or after. Um, this was, um, this was like after my first semester of college. So this is like around the same time. I went to Ole Miss for a semester for business and classic story, you know, had a good time and, uh, that's that's all the good time that I had was that one semester. Um, it's 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 hard to take on the debt to justify a business degree these days. Um, I dropped out and ended up learning a business. But anyways, um, I went down. He wasn't my roommate, but he lived in the room in the dormitory above me. We ended up becoming really good friends, and we became roommates after this. After after that semester at Ole Miss, we went down to Jackson um, to stay at his at his mom's house. Um, we were just going down there for a day or two. He had to, like, pick up some things, and I was going to help him. So we're down there, and we're um, 
same shit. We're like, it's like, this is later. This is like two or three in the morning, something like that. And we were watching like, you know, like a scary movie or something. And he's on the love seat and I'm on the couch. And this is like when Roku's first came out. I'd never seen a Roku before um, this day. I was like, you know, what's that? He's like, oh, it's just this, it's this box and you can watch whatever. He's like, that's cool, you know. So we we turn off the TV or whatever and we're both like, when you're trying to fall asleep, but you haven't yet, we're both just laying there, you know. And the Roku remote was beside him on the ground, like next to the love seat. And I'm laying on my back, you know, and I can see him, but he's got his back turned towards me. Well, the Roku remote slides from beside his love seat all the way across the living room floor under my couch and hits the wall and like the wall behind me. So I just like slides across the floor and slaps the wall. <clears throat> and <Holy> like, <laughs> I'm like, Aaron, Aaron, dude, are you, are you awake? Like, did you, what the fuck was that? The Roku remote just like slid across the, it slid across the floor and he's like he kind of rolls over and he's like yeah man we don't we don't really talk about that and he like he rolls back over and like proceeds to go to sleep and i tried my best you know to fall asleep and i eventually did but the roku remote stayed where it was and it was there sure enough when we woke up the next morning so now wait a second so so that's something that he knew that was happening, and they just, yeah, <laughs> wow. I, I, I guess he had had experiences there too, and this is the same kind of thing. Like this is like, like a new construction home. Like these these houses aren't ten years old, and this kind of stuff is happening. And, and so that's not that can't be contributed to you being around then. Maybe, maybe not. It's hard to say. But he he was having some of the you know we haven't I've never he's no we never really got into like what he's seen and any of that. Um, but he's yeah he's like yeah we don't we don't really talk about it and then he rolled back over and left me with it. Well, I so at this point I just want to I just want to tell everybody this is the one this is one of the most frustrating things that happens in real life and in the movies is when something crazy happens and nobody wants to talk about it. Like oh, yeah. people talk about it, <laughs> get it and, 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 you know, share those experiences, what's going on, you know, yeah. that just drives, that drives me nuts. It's like, Oh, uh, okay. Well, we just want a billion dollars, but we're not going to talk about it. You know, I mean, <laughs> come on. Uh, something like paranormal happens, but we're just going to pretend it didn't, you know, that's crazy. Yeah. And I've brought it up to him recently too, but like, you know, do you remember that? Like, what the fuck was that? And he's like, I don't know, man, lots of weird shit happened like that. So he was seeing some of the same things too. Um, but <clears throat> You said it. You said it, man. So. Yeah. Huh. Well, uh, that's uh, hmm. it's very, very thought provoking. I mean, I, I'm sitting here just uh, <laughs> digesting and mulling it over here. It's like, my goodness. And um, I guess that's what you would, you know, you'd call it poltergeist activity. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It would be. That would be considered poltergeist activity, yes. Um, and I've got some more of those. I've got some more of those. So I have a few more stories if y'all want me to keep telling them. Yeah. Yeah. Share them. All right. Um, so <laughs> eventually I stayed in South Haven for a couple years. Um, eventually I moved back down to Oxford and I'm still here now. Um, but 
when we when we first moved back or when I first moved back, um, I met the now uh, mother of my child, children, plural. Um, and, you know, we started hanging out and we lived at her place or her family's place for a while. And eventually we moved out into this apartment and we lived in this little one bedroom apartment for a while. And I'm tw- like 20, 22, 23 at this time. Um, she ends up getting pregnant with um, my my son. And, you know, in this apartment, we don't have any, like, we don't have a laundry room, or we don't have a laundry room or anything like that. We don't have a washer and dryer. And, you know, she's worried because we need one. And the place we were renting, you know, they would list the other their other listings. And right across the street, there was this four bedroom, two bath house. And this is kind of the same thing, you know, it was, it's off the other side of the town square on the north side of town. And um, this house, this house was old, man. It was probably built in the teens or the twenties. I mean, it had, they weren't functional anymore, but it had the windows that opened from the bottom and the top. Um, Oh, okay. So, like, like super old house. Um, and we had a lot of activity in this house, too. Um, we didn't... It was four bedrooms, and there was the back bedroom. We really didn't go in it much because of, because of the vibe it gave off. And <clears throat> the the door to the closet in there was always like opening itself and closing itself. And, you know, we had just moved in there. So we still had, you know, we, we, we kind of used it since we didn't want to go in there. We kind of used it as storage, you know, there's boxes in there, like probably like bags of like winter clothes and stuff like that. And you know, this keeps happening and I'm at work all day and she's, she's home and, you know, she'll hear stuff all day and this door keeps opening, closing to this closet and it keeps happening. And she's like, okay, I'll just put, you know, one of these boxes in front of the door these heavy boxes in front of the door and it won't open anymore because we it was an old house so it didn't have any like real insulation or anything it didn't have an hvac system it just had a bunch of different window units Mm -hmm. i mean this house is super old um and i kind of chalked it up to like you know the wood and the house expanding and doing all that and that's it was swelling and contracting and that, that that type of thing well she puts you know, something that one of these boxes in front of the door thinking that's going to like stop opening. And, you know, the next time she goes in there, sure enough, the, that closet door is like wide open. And (laughs) I wasn't home, but there was like, like, again, there was like a dark handprint on the door, like a dirty type, like soot type handprint. And she kind of played, played it like that's probably Hayden's handprint because I'm, I work outside. I get dirty all the time. Yeah. She thought it was one of mine, but I mean, I didn't really go back there that much. So, so that's more, um, more poltergeist activity. Wow. So, so the handprint was almost like, whatever had pushed that out of the door open. Yeah, you would think, I mean, we, uh, I saw some more weird stuff. Like I would see, um, like sometimes I would see like a red pair of eyes in the dark sometimes in that house. Um, we, we, we did not like living there at all. I mean, we moved there in a bind kind of thing to have a bigger place for, for our son that was on the way. And we ended up like, you know, 
<clears throat> regretting living there because it was so so creepy and it didn't feel livable and come to find out um multiple people died in that house um a, a guy that i worked with he was telling me that his grandma died in that house and when he told me that i was like oh mm-hmm. like of course you know that makes sense yep so there's yep. a lot of unrestful energy in that house jeez yeah it wasn't fun to live in um while we were living there um around this time we were living there um i had a dream uh it was a premonition of my son um if you if you know what the cherubim look like the like the little like very fair-skinned angels with the red hair um i had this dream one night and this little boy came to me in my dream and he he talked to me and he said, Daddy, you, you don't have to be scared. And he, he would grab my hand and we would just fly upwards um, to, the, to the heavens, I guess. Sort of, sort of like an out-of-body experience? Were you able to look down and like see yourself that, leaving your body? No, nothing like that. I was, I was still whole. Okay. Um, and it was, it was a dream. And... You know, when he when he came out, he just, you know, he had this head full of red hair. And when he came out, you know, I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, yeah, he, he, right. came, he, he came to me in my dream and I saw him before he was ever born. And that was that was a really that was a beautiful experience, I would say. Yes, to keep definitely. On the lighter side. Yep. It's fascinating wow. too. <laughs> oh That's kind of yeah. I mean, if anybody's curious, just look up cherubim on Google, and that's more or less what my son looks like. I mean, he's he's very fair skinned with just like like fiery red hair. Um, he, I mean, he looks like an angel to be honest with you. But so that was an experience, and that's kind of like um, a callback to. What I was saying earlier with the with the premonition thing. Um, so I'll just keep these going. Let's see, hour and a half. How long do y'all usually do these things? About an hour. Yeah, <laughs> I'm over. <laughs> I'm way over. <laughs> yeah, you're a little over, but uh, it's fascinating. Um, well, uh, why don't you pick like your uh, the best one left on your list. We just might have to have you back again. I mean, if you got that many of them. Oh okay. My. Well, okay. I'll, I got two more and I'll try to keep them quick. Okay. All right. Um, the next one, this is around this time too. So, um, my girlfriend was pregnant with my son at the time and we were riding around like back roads. She didn't know she was pregnant. And, you know, we were riding down these back rows and um, we get to this, we get to Coontown Landing and we get there and I've got to piss. So I park right in front of the boat ramp and I get out and I walk around in the front of my truck and I'm looking off into the woods and and I'm pissing. So, you know. When I started peeing, dude, I felt like, like totally I was being watched. Uh, felt very uneasy. Um, I didn't smell anything, which is usually the case for these type of things. But um, I stopped and I walked back around and got back in my truck. And I'm... I'm turning to leave this rest area type thing. And as I'm turning, my headlights catch these glowing eyes. And these are like, like cat eyes or like, like dog eyes. Like when light hits them, they're like a yellow color and then it bounces off. 
um, this was this was in the winter time, and it was freezing cold, and it was it was raining, and my my headlights hit these eyes, and there's a girl sitting on the park bench at this rest area, and like I said, it's it's late at night. It's like twelve o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. And there's this girl sitting in this, like, it's not freezing, but it's, like, this really cold rain. And she's sitting there in a white T-shirt, just sitting on this park bench, just, like, glaring at us. And, you know, I saw that, and I peeled out, and I got out of there, man. It was it was another one that was pretty scary. <laughs> Um, what did your what did your girlfriend say? <laughs> like, it's the same type of thing. Like, you just kind of look at each other and you're like, like, do you see that too? We got like, we got to leave. Yeah. It's best not to question it. Just acknowledge it and move on. Huh? <laughs> oh, okay. That's scary, man. <laughs> that could be scary. Like, like it. Oh gosh. That was a skinwalker. I'm pretty convinced. Um, that was like that it had an animal's eyes and it had a human's body. Like I said, this girl was probably between between sixteen and twenty, I would say. No jacket on, white t shirt and like jeans on. It, like in the middle of the freezing cold. And we're miles. This is the important part we're miles and miles away from any kind of houses or anything. Um, and we're in the middle of like, like a boating, like nature reserve type area, like, um, like a boat ramp for a lake. Like there's no reason <clears throat> that she should have been out there, but she was, and she was watching me from the other side of the other, other side of the wood line. And I felt her, I felt her before I saw her and we poked out of there quick. Uh, wow. Like, so you're just totally going with like, cause I'd almost, I would almost like roll over and say, Hey, you okay? You need any help? Yeah. So you're getting the vibes though that like, I gotta get out of here. You've, no, known, you've, you you've been you around this stuff. <laughs> What's that? You would have eaten us, I think. Oh gosh, I, I yeah, wow, Jason or, or, or something. Jason, what, yes, just um, make a note that we, if we make it down to Mississippi, we are not <laughs> hanging out with Hayden. Oh man, I'm just, <laughs> I can show you guys a good time there. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> it's like a great time. It's like great we're, we're, I mean, bringing, not, we're bringing we're bringing flare flare cameras and and everything. So we, don't need flare <laughs> we don't need flare cameras. What are you talking about? No, we're gonna Just, get some of this stuff on video, and it's going on the YouTube page. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> wow. So, so 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 what makes you so what makes you think? This was a skinwalker versus just one of the other like um, entities that you've come across. <clears throat> because this looked the most human. Okay. Uh, without being human, because the the eyes that I saw were not a person's eyes, and that's why I didn't feel compelled to to stop and say, "Hey." Why are you out here all by yourself away from civilization? Because it feels like that's what something like that would want you to ask it. And then, you know. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I, wow. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, that, it's that same, like, trickster vibe that, you know, it, you, it needs you to play along more or less and I might have been you know I might have been a little ahead of it so 
I'll get to the last one since I've already kept y'all too long. Um, <laughs> to this last one, like I said earlier, um, I do I do landscaping and I own my own landscaping business. I've been doing it for like the last ten years. Um, and we were out on the outskirts of Oxford, and I was working with this guy, and um, I was working with this guy named Greg. And, um, he's had some, he's had some Bigfoot experiences too. Um, just like, like campsite kind of being like trashed and wood knocking and all that stuff. Um, we were, we were out in Abbeville, which is on the outside of Oxford and we had been trimming crepe myrtles. And, you know, if you've ever done that and there's, several crepe myrtles around the house there's lots of leavings and trimmings and stuff that you have to clean up well this guy we're doing work for he lived on an acreage and his neighbors had this huge i guess you would call it um not a puppy meal but like uh they raised great danes they bred and they raised they're, yeah they're a breeder of yeah yeah and you know they knew we were out out there because the whole time we would work, anytime we would go out there, they would bark and you would hear them the whole time you were working. You know, they would bark all day, more or less. And you can hear them across the across the woods, you know, just woo, woo. That type of thing. Because they're I mean, they're huge, they're hounds. Great. So we're working, you know, and like I said, he lives on this acreage and it his property went back, you know, further than the house. And that's where we would take these crepe myrtle trimmings. Well, we were unloading these crepe myrtle trimmings on the tree line. And this is usually where the those dogs would go nuts because, you know, we were getting closer to where they were at. So they, like, really start going. Well, they just stopped. They stopped barking and carrying on all together. And me and Greg are unloading these trimmings and we just hear like a like that type of thing from the woods. And same as the other shit, we looked at each other and he went straight to his glove box and got his 1911 out. And he's just like standing there next to his truck. Mm -hmm. We're like we're back and forth at each other. And I'm like, dude, put that thing up. Like it's not like it's not gonna help. That's gonna fucking tickle this thing. <laughs> and that's that's all we heard. Um, we heard a huge growl, and we <laughs> we cleaned off the trailer. And we booked it, man. We got out of the, we got away from the wood line, and we haven't been out there to do work for that guy since. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, listen, I gotta be honest with your history of experiencing stuff. How do you know that wasn't like a demon out there? <laughs> like, it could you know? it could have been anything, honestly. Yeah. Holy. Uh, it could have been. It it sounded like though. It sounded like like a gorilla at a zoo. Honestly, it sounded something like that. Okay. I don't know if that's what that was, but that's kind of what the closest thing I can I can describe. Because I've never really heard. I remember that one guy y'all talked to from Arkansas. I don't know if y'all played any of the recordings of the the sounds that the Bigfoot made, but I've never heard any of those recordings, so I don't have anything to, like, compare it to, really. But it was, like, guttural, mm -hmm. and it was very, and it knew, like, it knew we were there, and it wanted us to know that it was there, and it wasn't, you know. It kind of seemed like, you know, it seemed territorial. Um, well, it's definitely possible it could have been a Bigfoot. 
Because it's not like how we used to think when we were kids where they're only out west. No, I believe they are all over the United States. Yeah. And there's lots of those stories around here. I mean, there's there's dog man stories, there's goat man stories, there's squat stories, there's those panther stories. And I know several people with, with Bigfoot stories, man. Well, um, you know anybody with Bigfoot stories, you know we want to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for and sure. Definitely, and definitely in, in Dogman, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I totally. Mean, I know, um, in fact, um, Heather with uh, Small Town Monsters, they're, they're looking to do a second part of American Werewolves. Uh, and they're looking, I think they're in Texas right now, talking to some people. That have dog, they've had some dog man experiences, so they're looking for to kind of expand their uh search for that for those stories around the country to kind of start establishing some sort of um, I don't know, a pattern or or territory for where where these things might be. Um, so holy smokes, I mean, um. I, I know all I know is I wasn't expecting you to make that sound, and if I was been driving and you made that sound, I, I oh, it would totally for totally freak you out because I'm I thinking apologize. Bigfoot the minute I heard that before he said something. I apologize for anybody that drove off the. Hope <laughs> <burn. laughs> it didn't cause no accidents out there. What Better apologize mean? ahead of time here. <laughs> Holy smokes! Oh jeez! Yeah, that's well, uh, it, well, wow. Well, Hayden. Uh, hey, no, I'm I'm telling you, I appreciate you reaching out, and uh, I appreciate you listening to the show. Number one, but I, yeah. I appreciate you feeling like you could come on and share these experiences because some of the stuff is is pretty personal. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, um, and I know, um, I mean, you're right. We probably do have some listeners that have uh, experimented with some of that some of the psychedelic stuff and maybe you've had their own kind of breakthrough too. I mean, I, that stuff really does fascinate me as far as, um, and I mean, and I'm, I mean, I would never do something like that because I'm just, that that's how I'm built. You know, I, I've never even had a drop of alcohol. So yeah, there's, that's good, there's man. yeah. I mean, I just couldn't, I, it, to me, it'd be almost like it. And, and probably what everybody else suffers from, you, you don't want to give up so much control. Yeah. And really, we don't really have any control over anything. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's the biggest part of those experiences. Mm-hmm. Is you more or less have to let go. And yeah. You- yeah. And I, I, and I would love to, I, I'd love to hear from some other people about, you know, what they experienced because this isn't like, I, you know, it, it, and you mentioned it, you're, this is the stuff that just started happening. You know, the yeah. native Americans have been, you know, with sweat lodges and, you know, they, they understand getting in, you know, whatever ceremonies they did. Uh, yeah. Or still and it makes do. You wonder, yeah. It makes you wonder, you know, if those substances weren't letting them see some of these like entities, mm-hmm. these Wendigos and skinwalkers and those things. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we and we definitely do know that the that the government has done experiments with these sort of things for 50, 60, 70 years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. they have. Unfortunately, they did it to our soldiers. Yeah, and they did. You know, there was control groups that they did. They did it without people knowing, and mm-hmm. just to see what the effects were. And you know, and so where did they get those ideas from? From you know, civilizations ago, and 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 so it's really interesting to me that you know what those ancient civilizations and cultures do did understand about this stuff and how it does open you up to, um, you know, like you said, pulling the veil back completely. Well, Hayden, I'll tell you if you uh, if you know of any of your friends or any people that you've come into contact with that would like to come on and tell their story and get it out there. Uh, we would be glad to ha- speak with them. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Totally. Both did. Both did. And it would just cement it even further that we're not making the trip to Mississippi. Oh, so, no. uh, I will be there. I'll contact you. <laughs> uh, well, Hayden, hey, I appreciate you coming on, and I, I hope our I hope our listeners enjoyed um, taking this ride with us to you know do some of your experiences. And it so sounds like you're just getting started. Um, yeah. you're just, you know, you're just <laughs> yeah. a young pup. I hate to break it to you. You're just a young pup. You yeah. Little... That's what they keep telling me. No, I wake up with a, with the aching back and they're like, Oh, you know, you oh, God. Just, just wait. an aching back. Just wait. Hey, that's, that's hard. That's hard work you're doing though. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah no, I understand yeah. that, that, uh, that landscaping is, um, that's a pretty hard work. Yeah. And it's, it's been, it's my second year in business for myself. So it's like seven days a week. Right. All summer. It's been, yeah, grinding. But we're coming to the end of the cutting season. Now we get to start, you know, focusing on building cool stuff. So, right. right. That's awesome. Yep. That's awesome. Well, well, Hayden, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, I'm sure we'll stay in touch for sure. I, I love. Uh, I know there's going to be some other stuff I'm sure that you can share with us. At some yeah, maybe point. we do it again in, in uh, 10 years and I'll have another set of stories. Well, that oh, sounds boy. great. Hopefully we don't have oh, to wait boy. that long, but, uh, <laughs> but thank you. I do appreciate you coming on the show and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, dude. I appreciate you guys. It's really cool that y'all have, you know, that you have this platform because, you know, before listening to y'all's podcast, I've never really thought to be like, Hey, I could share these stories, you know? Yeah. Well, so. thank you for coming on. We really do appreciate it. And, uh, believe it or not, we, we're fascinated. We're looking for answers, but there's a lot of people out there that have experienced things that do not have the courage to step forward. And those people find answers by listening to, uh, programs like ours. And, um, that's good. I mean, because they, they know that they're not out, you know, they're, they're not alone. It was like, I'm not the only one. I'm not crazy. Other people have experienced this too. And they spoke out about it. So it just helps us like a, a little sigh of relief, you know, let them know that it's, it's, it's there. It's not just their imagination. It is there. Yeah. Shout out to Linnell, man. She did it. Yep. All right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Linnell did. Uh... <laughs> yeah. She, she blew my mind with some of her stories. Yeah, She's... dude. I heard yeah. that and I was like, wow like that's 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 something you know i've i've kind of i don't have any stories like hers but well thankfully I, very thankfully very few people do because that would i be can't a, imagine that. it'd be a scary world Holy yeah. Smokes. yeah that's the thing i think it is a scary world it's a scary world that we just don't have all the answers to so we need places like art so that we can try to find those answers truth is out there that's right thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the from the shadows podcast until next time never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows we are out <laughs> Go!